Good morning everyone, how are you? So, I'm working on my mushrooms on the forest floor. I've been busy, busy stitching and uh, it's time to start working the actual forest floor. So as for the mushrooms, this little guy here is stitched into place. So he sort of represents that sketchbook feel that the field notes is. And then we've got all of our different mushrooms. It's a bit of an eclectic looking bunch. There's been some top stitching done just to highlight some little features that one would expect to see in a mushroom. This little guy here is very Sue Spargo inspired from the book. Um, this is the second one from that book, but a little bit different because I've added this little touch of lace at the bottom here for the frill. Uh, what else did I do? Put a little bit over here, even though that's the sketch, I put a tiny little piece of lace if you can see that it's in on my thumb there um, just to show that frilly little bit that is often uh, at the mushroom it's like it's the point of which the much mushroom spouts from but I don't know I, <laughs> I don't know the technical details of mushrooms but it just seems to be a, a nodule on a stem where something else happens and it's often the cap but anyway let's not go down the rabbit hole of understanding the growth patterns of mushrooms the, um, these little guys here, I ended up just having some leftover variegated thread and I just did a little stitch around the edge of those. Blanket stitch down the stems. It was really fun just doing some random stitching around each of these guys. Oh, I know what I didn't grab that I wanted to grab is the mushrooms that were on the doily. Remember there was a doily that came to me with some little mushrooms on it and I was stitching last night and I thought you know I have not included that I'm just looking to the side here they are these guys I wanted to pop a few of these in just to build up my eclectic feel okay Do I need them? Do I save them for a rainy day? What I might do is I'm going to start the floor of the forest. And at that point, maybe I decide whether these get poked in or not. I'd love to include them because I've sort of tried to do different versions of mushrooms. And they would certainly be... A different version of a mushroom. I think I will include them because what was the odds that this came to me and then this became the prompt. So yeah. The other thing I haven't done yet is put a bit of a, um, a base on some of them where the mushroom grows out. You know how they often have that furry little bit. So I've got a little bit of lace. Um, I've got my little pack of pebbles. I haven't touched these since down the garden path. I thought maybe there was some that might suit because once I get some fabric in here and texture, it'll be knots and stitches and things like that. So beside me on the floor, I have a container of lace, but there really isn't much in here that's forest floor except that guy. So I might pull that out. They're probably a bit fresh. But, you know, you just never know. We'll just keep it close. So there's a, a brown. They might be too fresh. The other thing I grabbed, let me just put the lid on this properly, one task at a time, close the clips on the container, was I have two containers of random wool yarn. And I thought there might be something in here like this feather yarn so there's that one and this one eyelash yarn but first before we get to the little details we need to get something on the ground that is looking like forest floor i still have that around i have plenty of wool because all of the wools that we were snipping at to create mushrooms is just off camera here making a big mess 
and I thought I might start with some cheese cake. I'll take that grey as well. Now, I can't remember where I got this from. This was just after the whole COVID lockdown business when I was doing journals and a little bit of stitching. So it really is something you'd have to search for now because my memory fails me. Let's cut a chunk off. Fudgy, puss, puss. Fudgy's been sitting outside in the sun. So he's now coming back in to tell me all about his morning in the sun. You know what else I need to do? Hold the phone. I need to check my sizing. Because remember I made the piece bigger than I needed. So before I start attaching... Oh my goodness. Attaching... Um, pieces I think I should trim it because this thing is not going to shrink anymore hey fudge what you doing fudgy let's check sizes so that there needs to come back just a little bit so that size there of course it's always going to be too big for the book because that's how I roll just going to trim this just a fraction. No use building forest floor where I don't need forest floor. So let's get rid of that. Hey, Fudgy. He's at my feet here. Looking outside. It's a bit of a dreary day today. There's supposed to be rain coming. And... Um, no, I don't mind that even popping out. See that there? It's like giving me a little pop of that camel colour, which complements that. I can see that working for me. It's just this here probably needs to be trimmed back because I don't really want to see that cream. So I might just sneakily trim the calico with the camera moves it's because fudgy is doing the big smooch at my feet i just snip that thread that won't be imperative that it's gone and we'll let that camel fabric peek out past the page because then it can be part of the squirrel page couldn't have planned it better if i tried it's good when you stay within a theme because when you're popping them into these journals, things that poke out from one page and that work with the next page. Like, look at that. I don't even mind this bit hanging down the bottom here, you know. I'm not going to trim that. And I think my forest floor is actually pretty darn good where it is. That's good because I was getting a bit worried that these here were a little close. But that's okay. That fits. The top fits. Probably could do with a little trim, but that's not a, a major thing. Let's give it a small haircut. It's a little bit crooked. I think if that was like that. So I hope you're all well. I've just finished filming my video for Monday, which you would have watched now, because it's Thursday still. And in yesterday's video, your Monday, you would have seen Primrose as the prompt. And you would have heard that I was getting ready to go to the farm to start sorting out Dad's bits and bobs. I say bits and bobs, because that's just me wishful thinking that it's a few bits and bobs, but it's not. It's a lifetime and it's a farm. So you can imagine, but I haven't got there yet. I wanted to get another, gee, that's got awfully crooked, but I think it'll be okay because I can go out there. Gee, it's crooked. <laughs> I can go out there with the next piece. So that's okay. I'm happy with that and I'm happy that it'll fit. I love how that's popped out behind that squirrel. Look, look at that. You can see a little bit of my stitching, but I can always pull.
pull that back because it's this. Yeah, let's tidy that up now. So yeah, it's moving this piece along, getting the primrose piece filmed. Just want to pull that out a little bit. Just holding that. But that's okay because what I might do is just bring that back a little bit. Doesn't need to go right to the edge. Budgie, you're going to jump up. You know when they look at you? Come on. No. Nope. Too many obstacles in his way. Are you coming up, Budge? Puss, puss. Budgie, you're such a distraction. You're a lovely distraction, mind you. I'm just going to pin that back because I don't want the stitching to appear on that camel edge that's seen on the other side. Does that make sense? Yeah, that'll get it back in hidden. And then we'll have a clean edge of fabric for the squirrels. All right, a little bit of housekeeping there. You coming up, Fudge, or you going? So now, forest floor. Like I said, I'd like to have this here scooching around the place. Sort of don't want to inhibit any of the mushrooms because of all that work that goes into creating these little guys. I need to have it covered. So I think I'm just going to squish stuff around and then come back in with knots, turkey work. You're coming up now, Fudge. Come on, push, push. That's it. Come on. Here he comes. Hey, Fudgy. Let's just pat the cat for a moment. Hey. You've been outside. Yeah, every little scratch of the cat. Sorry, guys. When the Fudgy calls, I come running. When the Fudgy needs a pat, I come running. Okay, bit of a cuddle. Oh, Fudgy B. He's purring. Off you go there, darling. Now, what else can we put? I'm sort of thinking. Could texture it up a bit. Bit of this green. Can't hurt. Pin it in. I really need my applique pins. Let's get the little guys out on the job. Small little pins. So we've got a bit of a hill happening here. So I'm thinking we'll attempt to do a bit of a, a hill. And I just want bits of forest around. It doesn't have to be all detailed up because what will end up happening is um, it'll be just too much and I'll start overpowering my mushrooms. So I'm sort of just going to swish it around and see what happens. I think I need a bit of this in. I've been pouring at it since this started, so I'm just going to pop it in like so, just as another little textured piece. The good thing about doing nature scenes is you don't have to think too hard, guys. Just whack it down because everything just shoots and grows where it's going to. It's There's no... I tuck that under there. There's no rhyme or reason to it because, you know, Mother Nature does what Mother Nature wants. I'm thinking of bringing that through there. It is covering that mushroom a bit, but I think I'm okay with that for now. Oh, I got it. The bluntest pin. What did I pick up? Get rid of it. Bring the pins closer, girl. I've been so looking forward to sitting and doing this section of the piece because I really feel like it's going to bring it all together. 
I think some of those little mushrooms that I was just looking at can come to the foreground on top of some of these pieces. So we're starting to build layers. Yeah, I like that. It's very green, but I'm okay with it. Don't panic yet. So this grey. Oh, look at that. How's that for the bottom of mossy floors? Let's just pinch that bit. Hello, oh, Fudge. She's just had a drink of water. I think we'll pop that there. There is going to be layers and layers of pins happening here. That's okay. See, then in all of this, I can put scatterings of beads and French knots, colonial knots. Maybe if I pull pins forward as I go, that'd be smart. Okay, a little bit of this over here to balance the page and look at that frayed edge. Like, seriously, I could not stitch that. Well, I could, but I don't have time. <laughs> Let's be honest. The girl doesn't have much time. But she was so, oh, like, oh, love it. The forest floor is coming live. Now, the other thing I haven't got yet is the yarn. But what we might do is we're going to go to those mushrooms on that doily. I really feel like they could be utilised. So I need my little snippy for scissors. And I'm going to fussy cut them out as close as I can to their stitch line. And then we'll have a little audition and see what we think. But I think they will be as cute as buttons. I love the little red dots on them. Now, I haven't done anything with the C journal, which is the second one of these. This project. Um, so if you're wondering if you've seen me work on that yet, I haven't. We've only been on this one page. I just had a feeling this was going to be labour intensive. So we've only done the leaves for the Edith tribute, which you just saw with the squirrels, and this page. So I'm chugging along, but I am behind, but doesn't matter. I like the fact there's a mountain of stitching in front of me. That's great. It's better than what will I stitch next. Oh yeah, we are so including them. So let's grab this big guy because he is a monster. And if we can get him a home, the others will be easy. They're little in adornments, so to speak. The next prompt too is the birds, autumn birds. So those sorts of tones. That there would be great for a bird but i'm not going to do it because i would love to do a, just a page to a bird or birds or something so that'll happen but in the meantime we just chug along here the other thing that i realized too which i think i mentioned in the last video is the the prompt um summer days or something Oh my goodness, I can't remember. Doesn't matter, you guys know. You'll be all yelling it at the screen now. Uh, that hasn't been done either. And like I said, that might sort of be at the end of these and it blends into, I don't know, the squirrels took over with the autumn leaves. Maybe I don't get room for that prompt in this journal. Who knows, doesn't matter.
would have saved me a lot of time if I just created a single page just using these. But I couldn't. I had to have a play with the mushrooms, toadstools. So what I was about to say and got sidetracked was the sea journal, which represents my environment that I now live in with the same prompts, is going to be the red toadstool because he's out in my garden as a hose guide. It's a ceramic set of three mushrooms. I still haven't managed to take a photo. And then the page will be built on that as the theme and the mossy garden, the mossy floor, forest floor, oh, that doesn't exist, is just sugarcane mulch where these red mushrooms are. So sort of a gentle play on the prompt but is very much suits the journal of my world. I'm so pleased I did the two. Yes, it's a lot of work, but I'm pleased I did the two because this is just a great fun prompt. Now let's get this big guy in. Where are you going to sit? Mm, he's a bit big, isn't he? You are not going in. I sort of feel like you would be good there. We're over here. Hmm. Looks like I didn't need them all. Maybe you could go there. No. Do I put this guy there? See it? No, it looks better there. Do I put the big one to the side? Hang on, what about that? So I'm covering up the stem of that guy, so just... I like how he looks like he's shooting out. And he can come right down, or a space. I'm gonna pin that. Put two over here. I might be able to pull that down a bit so it's not inhibiting that mushroom as much. Yeah, I like that. And then this guy, I think I'm going to nestle over here somehow. We'll just balance that corner a bit. Don't think I can fit any more. I think it'd be too much. Probably is too much now, but ow, I don't care. There we go. I feel like I need something in the background there just to soften. See, I've got a gap there. So let's just get... No, we won't do that. I think we've got enough of that and that. Let's put that away. I think we've got enough of that. Put it away. Could we get a little bit more of that in the back there? We might. Let's start breaking this down. Then we're going to go to the yarn. So maybe that can slide in under there. Like so. Just to peep it through. Yep. No, don't need it. Don't need it. Right. Pebbles is easy. Let's have a look at this yarn. That's going to be a very quick way of getting sticks. We'll start with this eyelash yarn. I love this stuff. It is hard to get now. Someone was saying that they're not manufacturing it anymore, which would just be such a shame because it's just such a, a versatile element. So I'm thinking I'm going to just meander it across the whole picture or at least a good chunk of it, poke it in, because that gives us that fibrous 
sort of look, the quick turkey work look. So if you see this eyelash yarn in ops shops, grab it because I cannot find it in Spotlight. I haven't got specialty yarn stores around me, but most of them go for the the yarns that, um, you know, crocheting enthusiastic folks would use. And this stuff is probably not that. It was a bit of a trend for scarves and things like that for a while. And I'm wondering if that's why we're not seeing it. I don't know. But obviously Spotlight's thinking it's not needed. So that's just a bit of texture. Let me bring it up to the camera so you can see. You can see I've come from the bottom corner here, swished across, tucked it in behind there. It's just given us lots of sticks and that's crossing there. You can see a line of the yarn, but that's okay because I'll bring pebbles, knots and stitches up into that. Now let's go again, but drop it down to the forest floor and bring it across. So it'd be just a case of then using little stitches. Oh, pussycat's back up on the table. You're a bit frisky this morning, Fudgemus. I think I said in yesterday's video, he's off to the vet today. That'll take the spring out of his step. Having a bit of a checkup and then scheduling a time to have his teethy pegs cleaned and his toenails clipped. It's a bit of an old man claws happening. So I think I mentioned that in yesterday's video for you. So that's my Thursday job. That'd be fun, taking the cat to the vet. We found the cat carrier. He went over to inspect it. It's sitting by the door. Gaz dug it out for me this afternoon and it's sitting over by the door and he's spotted it. Cats just don't miss anything, do they? And he's gone over and given a good sniff. So I don't know what he was thinking at the time. He's probably thinking, why is that there? That usually means I'm off to get a needle or a thermometer where thermometers should not go on a cat. <laughs> but I'm expecting he's a... I've just got to move the chair. He wants to jump down now. Come on, Fudgy. Come on. Hop down. Oh, pussy cat. I'm expecting a clean bill of health for him because he's had... Um, Good reports in the past, so I'm not expecting anything terrible. I'm just having a look through this yarn to see if there's anything else that looks a bit odd, weird. Oh, do you think that would work? It's a bit of a different green. All of these I've picked up at thrift stores, and I was using them to make um, fibrous dangles off of that could be something, off of um, journals. You know, when we were attaching them to the spine to give texture and then you could snip away at it um, to create, you know, elements within your journal. I'll just open this one up too. It's very fresh and pink this side. I can't imagine there's something in here. This in it's very, we'll check that one out. The feather yarn, very autumnal. Oh, maybe I could do a bird with a bit of this on it. Remember that thought? I won't remember that thought. Maybe I will. Let's just have a look at these. Maybe. It's sort of, sort of very similar. It's probably too blendy. I think I've got enough eyelash yarn, so let's forget about that. 
that and that. This has potential to create something. What if we fold it a couple times? Just to create a little, I don't know, thing that might grow on the floor of a forest. Fudgy. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll just concertine it so it creates a little lump of something and then stitch it in. Future mushroom may sprout from that spot. I'm looking up at my screen for the TV and it certainly doesn't look amazingly inspiring, but it looks pretty good close up. It's just another layer of elements for it, I think. Another little one there. It's going to get quite busy. I like the color, it drags that color down. I might tuck this one in behind. So it feels like it's sort of back as well as forward. How easy is that? I feel like we need something across there. Just a little, little something to soften that. It just feels like it's plonked there, so I might, I might pull this piece out. Tuck it in there. Have it continue across. Just softens, softens that crocheted piece in behind. Then where's that cheesecloth? I feel like I could maybe do a slither of that there as well. Like I'm probably splitting hairs. It's getting very small. Like just a bit. Just to soften those little guys. And I might need to raise them because I feel like I've buried them now. So maybe then I can have him come up higher. Yep, that's better. I need to get rid of that sharp corner. If they go higher, they'll look more impressive. Maybe I'll just bring that crown instead of trimming it off. I hope I'm even on camera. I'll just bring that back around. Might as well just use it. And then this green and that little guy too. I honestly think he could go higher just a bit. No use smothering him in forest mulch. We want to see him. That's better. That feels a little bit more like it's part of it. Yeah, I think, I think we're there. Could probably put a little bit of this over here. Why not? Yep. Okay, so that's enough bits. Now, let's. Let's get some thread and it's just going to be a case of methodically going through and putting a little stitch to hold everything. I definitely can't get that big mushroom in, can I? 
No. So that's a little set of mushrooms that can go away for a rainy day. You never know when we're going to need mushrooms again. There we go. So now, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to start over here on my right. I might tip the fabric. That little guy's just fallen off. I'll tip the piece. Numerous bits fallen off. goodness it's fiddly okay there we go so I will tilt the piece there's bits falling off everywhere I need some stitches in here the other thing I didn't get in is a bit of this lace but we'll get to that we'll leave it in view and I think what we'll do is just get something stitched, remove all these pins and then reassess. So I'm going to start on this bottom corner and just take my time and get some little tacking stitches down. And then see where it's sort of sitting and then come back through with some embroidery type stitches like the French knots and things like that. And also have a look at um, beads. Oh, there's a piece of just floated off in front of my face. It's very delicate until I get it wrangled. It's fiddly, but absolutely Fantastic. I love doing this type of stuff. If you hadn't have guessed, create something from nothing. It's the best challenge. Let's get that little guy stitched it down. Get a mushroom in place. Any gaps that sort of happen because things wriggle and move. I'm not panicking at this stage because, like I said, there's another layer to go on, which is all the pebbles or lumpy bits on the bottom of the forest floor, rocks and, you know. So now just heading back to that corner and I'll just focus on this whole corner and get it secured. Give this little mushroom a stitch. I'm using a very fine needle too. <clears throat> I'll just put that there. <clears throat> it's uh, helping me pierce through all of the layers. And when you've got crocheted elements like I have with that green in behind, it can be quite tricky to get a stitch through it, especially if you encounter an, a heavily crocheted knotted area. So... A thin, sharp needle for all you newbies is the way to go. If you're pushing too hard, change your needle. If it's a big, chunky, thick needle, change it. You'll know. You don't want to have too much friction because not only are you risking pushing a needle back into you, you're risking hurting your hands and being out of action to stitch because you've strained your hands. So possible your needle is too much of a crowbar to get through whatever it is you're stitching. All right, I'm going to whip up the side of this little guy. I'm not using a thread that matches. I'm just using my standard sewing machine cotton cream and it was just sitting here. My stitches are tiny, so I'm not too concerned that they're visible. But if you wanted to match, you know, thread for background, go for it. I don't have time for that. I'd be changing threads from browns to greens to 
Oh my goodness, couldn't be bothered. So I think that's pretty secure. I might take out that pin, drop down to the top of that little mushroom, drop a little stitch into him. If this was a piece going onto a jacket or something like that, I would put a lot more stitches in. <clears throat> but because it's a piece going safely into a journal, I'm not going to over stitch it because it'll be pretty safe. Plus the other thing is it'll feel three dimensional if there's a little bit of movement everywhere. It'll feel like I've achieved, um, you know, depth. But if that was on a jacket, you might want to stitch around the whole thing, which would make your piece feel very flat. Another reason why I love putting my work into journals. I know a few of you have commented that you just don't see it again. It's within a journal, but I'm not too worried about that. I don't mind picking up a journal occasionally and having a thumb through the pages because suddenly I spot things and I'm like, oh, that's right, I remember when I did that. It's sort of like a, a nice surprise to revisit. I don't have the walls to hang everything. Fabric hung can attract dust pretty easily. And even though Gaz is not a asthmatic anymore, he was when he was a kid, he does react pretty quickly to dusty environments. It can just straight away, his nose is set off. So I'm pretty cautious of how much I have around that can attract uh, fluff, dust, you know, all those sorts of things. So if I do hang something on the wall, it's, it's an item that can be wiped over pretty easily. Little pin, you can go. So I feel like I've secured that whole corner. I'll just use the last little bit of thread on my needle and come back carefully through all these pins and then what I might do being that this is stitched will be here forever if I stitch the whole thing is I might just grab some cottons threads and we'll do a little bit of embroidery like I plan right through the whole piece and that way you guys know exactly where I'm heading and when I come back in the next video, which is goodness knows when, it will be a finished piece going into the journal and I can kick off another piece, which will be who knows when. <laughs> oh, by goodness, I tell you. All right. So that whole corner is secure. I think I can get rid of that pin. Push you forward you forward and let's just here i know a few of you comment too in our facebook group at times that you find that even though it's slow stitch and i guess a gentle creative process that you feel overwhelmed very quickly if it's sort of too big of a piece and I think this is a scenario where that could happen. Double page spreads, definitely. Mm. Couple little rocks. I keep going to these little brown ones. I'll put three on, sparingly. I guess what I'm trying to say, hang on, <coughs> clear my throat. What I'm trying to say is um, just focus in a little area. You can always come back to your piece. I am changing my thread color now because my little rocks of the What's the odds that needle won't fit through those rocks? At least you can get one on there and then go hunt out a smaller needle <clears throat> later.
do want a little bit of that lace too. So let's just hold that close. Gosh, this journal is going to be so thick and chunky. Now I'm adding rocks to the page, for goodness sakes. <laughs> let's just secure my stitch first. Then we will add a pebble. Now the book will be six inches thick. Let's get this little guy in position. Put my big pieces in first. And then work back from there. I knew this journal would get chunky. I just can't help myself. That's all right, it's on the bottom corner. It's not in the center. Try and keep your rocks away from the fold if you're putting rocks on your floor. Keep them out to the perimeter because then you're not inhibiting that spine too much. There's another little rock, let's put that in. Rachel mentioned in her video too last Thursday that the series Territory had caught her eye as a potential new series on Netflix, an Australian drama. Um, she's probably watched it by now, but I had just finished watching it. Gaz had to go to Brisbane for the day. So I was stitching mushrooms and I found it as well and watched the six episodes that were there. I'm not sure if that is the end of the series or there's more. I haven't gone down the research side to see where it's at. Sort of felt like it had ended and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, there was definitely bits that were a bit bit corny. You know, the, the way people were behaving in the family more so than, you know, generational change within a cattle property and I've seen a lot of that behavior just with old boys letting go to sons but um, I loved it I loved it I'm as you know a farmer's daughter but not that type of farm ours were more of a dairy farm boutique type farm small crops this is a massive property I did Google the actual um, station and it is one of the biggest. I think it's called Tip Tipperary, Tip T I P E R Y. Oh, I'm not sure if that's right. Um, there was 180 odd camera crew and staff on set for the month when they filmed the series. I guess the corny bits were when the stockmen who were helping them do a big muster arrived and it was an outside crew hired in to do the task which takes weeks to muster all these cattle and then off they go to market via massive b doubles triple doubles quadruple doubles massive road trains the opening shots of them driving up the driveway aerial shots there was a helicopter coming as well to help with the muster it was very mad maxi i thought so that was like, oh, gosh, look at it. They've lined them all up perfectly spaced as they're driving. But it sort of felt like it was a, a nearly an Australian version of Yellowstone. So if you loved Yellowstone and you wanted to see the Australian version of it, that's what it seemed like. So I, I did enjoy it, but it sort of felt very familiar to me does show our country beautifully. Having said that, they filmed it in wet season time because it was as green and plush as it comes. And boy, that's up in the Northern Territory, that station, and it's dry and it's hot. It's tough country. So it certainly made it look, mm, what would you say, gloriously lush when it's usually hot and arid. And So don't think, 
if you do watch it and you're from overseas, <clears throat> that that's what it's like all the time up there because, boy, that was showing it at her best. But they say there's two seasons. I don't know if they said this in the show or I heard this recently for someone. I think it was in the show. There's two seasons, wet season and drought. So I've just picked up this little strand here. And I'm just going to do some little stitches. I couldn't decide, was I going to do knots or actual grassy stitches? You know, just some long stitches. And you guys can probably not see this, but I can. So I'll just do a couple stitches. Work my way back. I might end that off because I want to get to the other side of the mushrooms. You can see on the back there those few little stitches I did. Camera's probably not up close enough, but if I get up close, you guys risk not seeing <clears throat> anything because I can be out of camera shot just as easy. So I might just move that. Put a couple little grassy stitches here. It really is going to be just skipping along that bottom edge and putting in a few little bits and bobs. Nothing too big, but I think we're right up in the foreground. So it's going to be a scenario where if I get too grand and try and do, say, a feather stitch or, you know, something like that. So I've got a tiny bit left. I'll leave that. I really think I need a chocolate. So let's let's go to this guy. There was a scrap here yet. Oh, no. This is a variegated thread. I think I used it. Goodness me. This would make good knots. So let's get my, I've got a cruel needle to do French knots. That's not the sharpest idea. Let's have a look for a better needle. I need a milliner's needle. So nice big eye. That's a cruel needle. Uh, we can pull it off. If my knots just aren't too tight, which is another thing, I could do really loosey-goosey French knots. We'll see. Okay, focusing around the pebbles. We'll pop a few knots in just to help build up that brown, rubbly floor. Oh, they're going to be loosey goosey knots. That's a quick way to. I tell you who does a lot of that type of work is, is it Emily Norton? She does these gorgeous, loose French knots and colonial knots to build up layers within her pieces. So there, I've done some tight ones and some loose ones. Let me bring that right up to the camera. See how that guy's sticking up in the air there, loose? That's just not letting the knot be too tight. And because it's variegated, it looks like I've intentionally changed thread colour. So what I will do is when it's the bottom, bottom of the forest floor, it'll be a tight knot. When I pull up maybe quarter of an inch into the picture, I'll do a loose one. So then I get this twiggy, soft, <clears throat> sort of loopy feel, but on the very edge will be all these little knots. And I think I can drift between that and even some of the other variegated threads that I've been using. That, and that's going to tie it into the mushrooms because all of those colours are already on my piece. I'm going to get rid of some of these cottons. They can go away. That chocolate's a good one. That green's a good one. He's good. He's good. 
so it'll be just now meandering along the bottom of my piece building up layers and detail so that one's high so I've left it loose but I pulled it and it went tight so forget that sentence Um, what else has been happening? I've just finished the series of, is it King of Tulsa, Tulsa King? Either way, Sylvester Stallone's series. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I've never been a Sylvester Stallone fan growing up with his movies. They're just not me. And I've often wondered about the gentleman. But having said that, he seems to have matured into a, a really good actor like he probably was but I just wasn't into the genre of movie that he was known for <clears throat> this you know when you watch it and you see his face and his poise and his moment of letting the sentence or story just have that little bit of air space to before you the character goes on to the next thing I don't know if I'm making sense oh boy absolutely mesmerized it's like where have you come from as an actor my husband's sitting there going he was fantastic and rocky and all of those movies that he was famous for back in the 80s i'm like yeah i don't know rambo <laughs> i don't think i saw an actor there i saw an action hero this this series i don't know correct me if you think i'm wrong I feel like this series, he's given himself a chance to, I guess, play a, a serious role. And he's a plays a mob boss and he's building a crew in Tulsa because he's pretty much been sent there as a, um, you're not in retirement, you're still valued. Go to Tulsa and see what you can build from the mob family. But there's all these understories of people who want him gone. Plus, he's gone into a new town and he's setting up business opportunities. You have to watch it to work out what that is. But picture the mob. You can imagine what they think is a business opportunity. He's recruiting a new crew who are just young people from the town who really have got no idea how New York works, you know, the mobsters of New York and back east and back west or the way they say it it's quite amusing so it's quite funny to watch the development of those characters as they experience things that just you know no child should ever experience they're not children they're you know 20 to 30 and he's just muscled in and they've fallen into his web and you can see he's actually very fond of them all. So when bad things happen to some of them or families connected to him, it really cuts him up. And I suspect that that character back in the day, prior to his time in jail, taking the fall for some poor behaviour, <clears throat> and now he's out trying to rebuild his life, I can sort of see he's quite conflicted that he's an older gentleman now. He's re recruited to form his own little mob gang for the boys back home but he really cares for them so there's this softness to his character so yeah i'm really enjoying it. it's not a classic mob boss story it's like a gentle but you sort of every so often something happens, you go you know at the end of the day you are a dirt bag you are inflicting this horrible lifestyle on these people in this city who willingly are well not all are willing they like resist and but out of loyalty to him continue anyway i've enjoyed it and i've become a bit of a sylvester stallone fan would never have thought i'd say that in my lifetime Just going to do a couple loops. I feel like my loops could be a little bit more exaggerated. With this would be perfect for turkey work, but I don't think I'll need to because I've got this furry stuff. I think there's enough enough happening. 
just get some little tangly bits in behind these pebbles. And I think too, the trick to this type of work is stay in clusters. Put in those couple big features, whether it be a piece of lace or a rock or two, and then work out from that piece. So when you get to a point where there's nothing much happening, let that air happen, but stay in little lumpy clusters. I don't know if that makes sense. So I'm just going to end that off and leave that thread because it'll continue. Now I just want to zoom in so you can see how that's building up there. So there's a cluster, there's a cluster, there's a cluster. That's going to be quite a big cluster. Then it'll there'll be nothing here and I'll start bringing in something through here. Now the only other thing I want to add is I picked up some beads. Where are the beads? Did I not bring them? I had them in my hand and it's a necklace. No, I didn't bring it. Hang on. <clears throat> this is a necklace that I pulled apart and they look like they're pieces of timber. I don't know if it is or not. But they're really odd little beads and I thought a couple of those might help my rocks look a little bit more. Is that going to go through? No. Before I sit down on the couch and stitch this, I'm going to have to go through all of my needles and just make sure I've got a needle for all occasions, something for rocks, something for knots. Otherwise, you get yourself ready to go and... You can't get the needle through the element you're wanting to stitch. So let's put this little piece of timber-like look. I think this will just add that little bit extra detail. Oops. I guess um, you can see why I've kept the top of this piece quite free of stuff. And just let the fabric be up there because I knew this would get quite intense along the bottom here with stitching. Probably could do with a couple more stitches on that little move them before I knock them flying. I've got to sit and do a heap of paperwork this afternoon too. Goodness me, I went away for three weeks on the road with retreats and then two weeks down in Brisbane with Dad and I am so behind on entering invoices into the system and I um, spent Monday catching up on invoices that are from Australian suppliers and the last job now is to enter in the last shipping container of stock that we brought in. So Gaz has prepared the spreadsheet that I need, you know, with the cost of each item and the quantity and sort of consolidating all of the info. So all I've got to do is key punch it into the system because um, Chelsea, who is in our Slacks Creek store, she's... Um, starting to see things sell out. So she needs to know how many she got, how many have sold and whether or not it should be still on the website because it's not technically connected to our inventory. So she manually goes, oh, that one's looking like it's a bit low, I wonder. And then she'll just take it off of the website. But she needs data to know that. And because I haven't entered all of the invoices that have represent the stock that's come in for the last six weeks. She's flying blind a little bit, but um, I believe I will be back on top of it today. So once I get back from Fudgy going to the vet, I think his appointment is 10.30. This will all be old news to you guys and a weekend would have passed. I've got an afternoon of 
key punching. Oh, yay. But that's all good because I, then I have an evening of stitching to recover. <laughs> there we go. So we've just dropped a few of those little random beads in as well. Okay, let's put the lid back on that before there's a disaster. I think I'm grabbing too many threads too. I'm going to just bring the camera back up. I don't think I need these. Let's just keep it simple. I don't need them. I don't need that. I think it's going to be just that. Do I need the lace? I don't think I do. Just, nope, put the lace away. I don't think I need much of that. I'm not going to do any more of it. I can always grab it if I need it. So I think I'm there. That is the plan. That is finished. I've just got to cross there. I then need to have a think about what happens up here. Let's have a think about that. That is, you know how we do a colour palette sampler? Maybe we just do a cluster. What do we reckon? A cluster of the fabrics used in the piece as our colour palette. Does that sound like a... That's a snip there. Can we disguise the fact? This is the sketchbook scenario. What else can we put up there? We used a little bit of that. I wonder. I've still got some of the bits. Samco embroidery. Pure linen. Let's use the words pure linen. Just a case of how to present it. What else can we put there? What else did we use? I used a little bit of that. Crocheting. We use crocheting. Let's take a little bit of this orange. I don't know. Just fiddling for the sake of fiddling. It's like a um, storyboard. Do we put a little bit of the green in? You know, when I got that, I thought, when am I ever going to use that? But you just need that prompt to come along that is a colour palette, and suddenly orange and green from the 70s is working. There we go. That'll do. Pure linen. Pin it. My little storyboard. I feel like I could do with something in that centre. Because it's that orange piece of fabric has a cut in it. See that? Does it matter? Probably not. So this is the storyboard of fabrics. Oh, that, gee, that, why is that hard? Of elements used below. I could have put the word forest floor, mushroom, something like that. Whether there's a, something, I don't know. That's a good start. Could use a little mushroom up there. Can we 
these are a funny little pair. No, leave it, put it away. There's three of them. That's a future project. Maybe I'll spread this there. That's what I'll do. I'm going to spread that. So we're highlighting the fact that it's split. So don't, do I, or do I just stitch it? No, we're going to spread it. So it just looks like a little piece. Um, anything else? I've got a little bit of orange here. Did I use this? No, I didn't. So don't put it in. Did I use that? Nope. I think that's it, guys. I could take some pebbles up there. Oh, did I use this? No, that's enough. Stop. All right, guys. <laughs> Just keeps going, doesn't it? A little sampler. Thin little needle in my container ready. So it's just going to be a cluster of bits and bobs, a sketch, and then here's the forest floor. There we go. I can todge off now and do some more stitching. Have a lovely day, and um, I'll catch you in the next video, which I'm hoping will be the start of another scene in the second journal. But we'll see. Who knows? All right, guys, look after yourselves, and I'll see you all soon. Bye.